In this video, I'll show you an example of resolving a force, uh, or any vector for that matter, into components acting along directions that are not at 90 degrees to each other. In this particular problem, we're just going to look at the force F1, uh, which is 300 newtons and acts at 30 degrees to this u-axis. Okay, so we want to know the, component, the components of this force F1 along that u-axis and also along the v-axis. So we'll start our solution by drawing our vector force F1. Then we'll draw our required axes U and V. And we recall that uh, finding the components of a vector is kind of like uh, the parallelogram law of addition in reverse. So we'll draw lines at the tip of F1 parallel to our axes. So here we've got a line parallel to the axis U at the tip of F1. And then we have another line here parallel to the axis V, uh, also at the tip of F1. So we know that the components of a force must add up vectorially to give us the um, original force. So we would have component acting along here V uh, U direction plus a force component acting along the V direction here to add up to give us F1. Uh, we could also consider a force here along the V direction, so the force component V plus the force component U. So let's draw those in. So we have the component FU and the component FV acting along those directions. Okay, so let's label those. F1U and F1V. So now having drawn our vector diagram, we just need to make use of trigonometry. So we'll work out, uh, or we can see that this angle here is 40 degrees, right, because we've got a total of 70 here, opposite our 70 over here. Right, so we can put that on our vector diagram. And then from alternate angles, uh, we can see that this force here will also be 40 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is the alternate angle to this one. And from our information given, we know this angle is 30 degrees. And from the sum of the internal angles of a triangle adding up to 180, we can see that this angle in here is 110 degrees. So what we're trying to do here is to work out uh, the length of F1U and also the length of F1V. Um, and we know the length of F1, because that was given in the problem, and we've now worked out all the angles. So if we know angles and a side, uh, and we have two unknown sides, then we can just use the sine rule twice to solve for those um, unknown forces. So first, let's look at F1U. So we have here F1U, the opposite angle is 40 degrees. So we have F1U over sine 40, and we know the length of F1, and the opposite angle there is 110. So we've substituted that into the sine rule, and we can now rearrange that equation to solve for F1U, which comes out at 205 newtons. Okay, so let's do the same thing for F1V. So here, F1V, its opposite angle is 30 degrees, so it will be F1V over sine 30, and we can just use the same um, ratio from the previous example, so F1 over sine 110. Let's do the calculations. Right, rearrange that equation to solve for F1V, and we get 160 newtons. So now let's summarise our um, answers and write at the end uh, that our final answers are the component of F1 in the U direction is 205 newtons and the component of F1 in the V direction is 160 newtons and we remember that um, components do not have to be at 90 degrees although um, 
most often uh, that's what we do calculate, but in this case uh, our components are not at 90 degrees to each other. And as you've seen in this problem, uh, knowing all of your angle relations, trigonometry and geometry that you should have learnt in high school is very important for solving these engineering mechanics problems. And uh, you thought all that stuff that you learned in high school was useless, didn't you?